watching the service now or later on. Um, the uh, after the service for um, if you're here uh, for tea and coffee, um, you might even want to volunteer uh, to uh, serve it. Um, there are a few notes. Um, we have uh, Pray Brum uh, Friday and Saturday. Um, we have a slot at St Chad's at twelve. service 12 o'clock we have um, the um, <clears throat> the annual um, church business meeting um, followed by our normal church uh, church meeting at 12 o'clock and there are papers at the back here I think that's all the all the notices we have this morning Thank you to Christine. It's a good day to have a name beginning with a C, whether you're in church or at home. Uh, and you may be called upon to do something. If you... This morning, there's a little bit of housekeeping for people at home and people in church. For people at home, or see us because we will be elsewhere in the building. So it might be helpful for you if you're watching online to go to the Cars Lane website and to download the words that we will be sharing in prayer. Um, or if you cannot manage that during the service, if that's a bit complicated, then obviously if you look afterwards, you'll be able to see the words that we are sharing whilst you have a little pause in your worship. If you are in church, then you will have realized that we are also moving twice during the service. If you find walking hard, Christina or Christine or I will get a chair for you when we walk. And I'm getting signals that I need I'm getting signals that I need to speak up more clearly, which is wonderful because as somebody who finds it hard to hear, it's really lovely that it's pointed out to me during rather than after the service. So during the service, if you cannot hear Christina or myself and would like to, then can you please wave at us and we will speak more slowly and more loudly. Um, uh, yes, the whole congregation is gathering at the space at the back of our worship area twice during the service. We're gathering in an oval shape around the communion table. The communion table is off to that side and we will be like a big oval. We'll all fit in if we tuck ourselves in to say together the covenant prayer and to receive communion together and I hope by the end of the sermon you'll understand why we're making that movement. This morning it's my great privilege, my great privilege to say to my siblings, to say to my sisters, to say to my brothers, it is God who welcomes us to worship this morning. God who loves us with an overabundant love, who says, you are so welcome. So I call upon Christina to lead us into worship. Good morning, everyone. Yeah, I can be Italian today and I can scream. That's great. Um, so throughout the, the worship, uh, uh, I would like, uh, if you are able and if you want to, to join in in the bold type. So let us, as Caroline has beautifully said, open our heart, open our mind. Sunshine is here, so let us celebrate the fellowship, the family that we are in God. Let us uh, celebrate a God who loves us just as we are. So please do join with me in the call to worship. 
And as you have heard today in the service, we will have an opportunity to renew our deep mutual promise of commitment, our covenant with God and God's covenant with us. So let us say together the call to worship. We come to worship our faithful God in this new year. We come to praise our God. In our sorrows, in our joys, In our hopes and our dreams, because we know God is entirely faithful and with us now, with us then, and with us always. We come to work with you, our God. We come to praise you, our God. Amen. So let us sing together our first hymn, and in this case you are very lucky that the microphone is not working. So let us sing together, Great God, Your Love Has Called Us Here. And if you are able, please do stand.
So let us pray as we say bye to the Junior Church. Let us pray. Glory to you, O oh God. Glory to you, Jesus Christ. Glory to you, Holy Spirit. Glory to you. You birth us into life. You bring us into your family and make us part of the body of Jesus Christ. God, we praise and worship you. Amen. Let us now hear our readings. The first reading is from Deuteronomy, uh, chapter 29, verses 10 to 15. You stand assembled here today, all of you, before the Lord your God. The leaders of your tribes, your elders, and your officials, all the men of Israel, your children, your women, and the aliens who were in your camp, both those who cut your wood and those who draw your water, to enter into the covenant of the Lord your God, sworn by an oath which the Lord your God is making to you today, in order that he may establish you today as his people, and that he may be your God. As he promised you, and as he swore to your ancestors, to Abraham, to Isaac, and to Jacob, I am making this covenant sworn by an oath not only with you who stand here with us today before the Lord our God, but also with those who are not here with us today. Our second reading is from John 15, verses 1 to 10. Jesus, the true vine. I am the true vine, and my Father is the vine grower. He removes every branch in me that bears no fruit. Every branch that bears fruit he prunes to make it bear more fruit. You have already been cleansed by the word that I have spoken to you. Abide in me as I abide in you. Just as the branch cannot bear fruit by itself, unless it abides in the vine, neither can you unless you abide in me. I am the vine, you are the branches. Those who abide in me and I in them bear much fruit, because apart from you, from me, you can do nothing. Whoever does not abide in me is thrown away like a branch and withers. Such branches are gathered, thrown into the fire, and burned. If you abide in me, and my words abide in you, ask for whatever you wish, and it will be done for you. My Father is glorified by this, that you bear much fruit and become my disciples. As the Father has loved me, so I have loved you. Abide in my love. If you keep my commandments, you will abide in my love, just as I have kept my Father's commandments and abide in his love. May we pray together. Loving God, thank you for the riches of these two readings. As we listen with them, help us to hear your voice, to share in this mighty covenant, this mighty promise that you make to us and through us to one another. To love you and to love one 
funny thing, will it work, won't it work? Christina and I had a little Zoom conversation a couple of weeks ago about the covenant service. And uh, Christina said, well, you know, covenant service, it's a Methodist thing. It is indeed. The covenant service goes back many, many years. And it was because the Wesley brothers were quite methodical. And they said, it's all well and good. People say their prayers every morning. That's right and proper. It's all well and good. People gather together to receive communion and to share one another with one another in the gift of Christ to them as community. But actually, don't we need something that just reminds us each year, at the beginning of the year, about the things that are important to us? And so these methodical brothers said, why don't we have a service once a year, which all our little classes, you can see how bossy they were, fancy calling groups classes, but they did. We'll get all our classes to offer a prayer together each year, a solemn prayer that reminds them that they are loved by God and they are making a commitment to love in return as best as they are able. So some of the words in this service are quite um, quite antique. They, they carry a lot of history with them. Some people find them helpful. Others struggle with them a bit. And actually what the struggling does is help us in our life together as a little community. This morning, we look as I look along this sausage shape, we look quite a big community. But actually, we know we're quite a small community. But whether this is your first time worshipping in this group, or whether this is your 749th time, or 7,325th time, or whatever, you are part of this community, because that's what Jesus was talking about. He was talking about a vine that grows, gets cut down, new bits shoot out, a tendril goes there, a grape grows off that bit, and it changes. It's constantly in flux, and that's how we are. So you're part of community this morning, this community. And as this community, we say, we are siblings. We are sisters, brothers, together in Christ because we have this image of the vine that it's linked together. And this morning, we are going to show that in a very um, physical way. We're going to stand in an oval or sit in the oval if standing is difficult, doesn't matter. And we will have to squash a bit and we will be a bit ramshackle. And that's what vines are like. And that's what Jesus said, that he said, I am the vine. He didn't say, I am the perfect statue carved complete and going to win uh, whatever you win for the best Oscar, for the best statue. He didn't say that. He said, I'm something that's got tendrils all over the place. It's a bit messy, needs a bit pruning. That's what I am. And you're my followers. You are too. So if we're a bit messy down the other end of church, then that's actually reflecting our covenant with God, saying, we're doing our best, God, to love you as you love us, but actually we know that we don't always get it. But it's a community thing. I can't make a covenant of community by myself. I just can't do it because I'm just me. I have to be with other people. And that's part of the message of the vine too. We need one another. We need one another because we're the common together becoming the body of Christ. That's why too with communion, if Christina suddenly gets up one morning and thinks, oh, I'm going to have a communion service by myself, she's not able to because it needs others. We need to be knit together as community. And that's a really ancient idea because our first reading from Deuteronomy was Moses saying to the people, we're going to make some promises, chapesses and chaps. And these promises aren't just for us. The 
these promises are for everybody in our community, whether they're going to stand up and make these promises or not, because the, the reading finished, I'm not making this covenant only with you, but also with those who are not here with us today. So we're making our covenant with glass at either end symbolically saying we're making this for the people of Birmingham or the people of wherever we live or wherever we call home. This is something that we're doing together but it's not just about some little huddle of Christians who say okay we're the chosen ones and everybody else they're the baddies. No, that's really bad theology. That's not what Moses was saying when he was making the covenant. The covenant was for the the men but he does say your children your women the aliens in your camp those who cut your wood your servants those who draw your water whoever they are the covenant is with them that's what we're doing that's why we need to gather together because it's a big big ask our first hymn this morning was great god your love has called us here. I can't find the words. Hang on a sec. I will. Your love has called us here. Your living likeness still we bear, though marred, dishonoured, disobeyed. We are the body of Christ in Cars Lane this morning. That's why we can share communion together. And we are people who are called. We're not just random. We're called by name. That's why we have a Christian name to say you're known, you're loved by God. But not just as you are, but also with this greatest, greatest of all the Christian virtues, that you will be pruned, which is uncomfy, and most of us know something about that discomfort of pruning. Life's not always easy. Life's not always sweet. Yet through it comes new opportunities. Because we are people not only who have the glory of being pruned, but we are the people who know that fresh fruit will come. We are the people of hope been thinking a lot about hope this week because I've watched a beautiful film which I commend to anybody who hasn't seen it called Just Mercy about um, a swish young lawyer who goes down to Alabama to work with the people on death row. It's a true story and it's quite a harrowing watch. Um, but in this beautiful film, at one stage the lawyer says very profound thing. He says, hopelessness, hopelessness is the enemy of justice. Hopelessness is the enemy of justice. We are called as community, we know, to be people of justice. We say, I can't do that. Well, I say I can't do that. That's too big an ask. When I've lost my hope. The covenant is about us saying we are people who hope for the fresh fruit, not because we're whistling in the wind, not because we're just optimists, but because we believe in a God who says, I am making an everlasting covenant with you. I make it when life is good and sweet and happy. I make it when I die on a cross. I make it regardless. And the sweetness, the hope, is that when Christ makes the covenant on the cross that we celebrate in our communion, he says, you can't just cut me down, squash me into a grave and say, that's it, it's over. No, my love and my life bubbles back up. That's the resurrection, isn't it? And that's who we are making our covenant with. We are making our covenant with the God of Christ who says, cut me down and I rise up. So we make this promise together, not trying
costing that we're suddenly going to be wonderful people who'll never make any mistakes. No, we'll need to be pruned again and again and again. I get so much wrong, so do we all. But we make this covenant prayer because we say, we are making this with the God of life and love and hope. And hope means justice for all.
so much. We shall sing together, O thou who camest from above, the far celestial to impart, one of Charles Wesley's most powerful hymns. It is number 564 in the book. Let us now pray together as we pray our prayer of intercession where we pray God for our community, the world, and for ourselves. Let us pray. Almighty God, as we bring our prayers for others to you now, we are aware of our inadequacies to help more and do more. Nonetheless, we come to you trusting in your power and trusting in your love. We see the needs around us and for them we pray. And so today we are praying for all those who are struggling with decisions as to whether to strike or work, seek more pay, better conditions or go with the flow that we all face at present time. We pray as we remember union leaders, those on the front line, politicians. We pray for all involved in deciding what is right and affordable, what is just and what is fair. We pray today for countries in deep poverty where there is no extra support, no pay and no good conditions. We lift up our voices for an end to the political unrest around the world where stable lives have been turned upside down and futures been made more uncertain. In countries where one party seems no better than another, where political unrest seems to be escalating more and more. We remember in our prayer Iran, 
Brazil, Ukraine. Especially today, we would like to pray for those involved in the plane crash in Nepal and their family. May they feel your presence and your comfort. And as we look at this country, we pray for those in the British government seeking to resolve the Northern Ireland Protocol. We pray for all the differing views, hopes, and aspirations. Help all to come to see the needs, the realities, and lead us to a correct and just way forward. We pray for those areas of the world where storms and floods and fires are still wreaking havoc. May those who are seeking resolutions for the climate come together, listen to each other, see the need, and move towards sustainable action. For the frightened and the fearful, and the voiceless in societies who have no good news to tell, no stories to encourage, no history worth to repeat to other generations. We pray for the ruthless and the lost who see no path. We pray for those who are suffering, for those who are healed, and for those who are in pain, overwhelmed by physical or mental pain. We ask you to bring them comfort, to bring your love. May you be a light in the darkness of their suffering. And as we pray together, we pray for those who we know personally, who need our prayers and your love. We pray for those of the church at Carslane who cannot be here with us. And we pray for us, body of Christ, community among other communities, may we tell all the people and ourselves of your love, your promises, and life eternal. And as we come to an end of our prayer, we also pray for the beginning of next week of the week of prayer for Christian unity. And we offer all our prayers, spoken and unspoken, in the name of our Savior, Jesus. Amen. And so let us now continue our moment of prayer as we say together the prayer that Jesus taught us. And please feel free to use whatever language or version you feel more comfortable with. And so we say together, Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. In a moment, we will return to the oval shape within church, and those watching at home or elsewhere may use the print for the words to receive bread and wine. But before we move, the words of invitation and prayer. 
whoever you are, the table is spread for you. Whatever you've done, this table is spread for you. Whatever your faults or fears, your faith or doubt, this table is spread for you. Christ recognized our weaknesses and was still ready to die. He knew we deserved nothing, yet he gave all. Wherever your journey may have taken you, this table is spread for you. Loving God, we rejoice that though we consider ourselves unlovely, you consider us precious. Though we deserve so little, you delight to give us so much. Though we count ourselves sinners, you value us as children. So we come assured of your grace, assured of your goodness, assured of your welcome through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us move.
worship reminds us that our vision is set upon God. So we sing together, be thou my vision, O Lord of my heart, be all else but naught to me, say that thou art. If you use a book, it is five, four. worship a huge thanks to all of you for being uh, flexible but also uh, to all the people who have made possible this worship helping with communion with lights and heating um, a short announcement uh, we are going to start 10 to 12 and uh, we will have uh, the um, annual congregational meeting and church meeting so we will have a little bit of time for tea and coffee but German, not Italian, 10 to 12, we will start here. So let us now receive the benediction. May the God 